So I'm in Emerald Hill right now, and I just made a new friend. <laughs> It's Ruben Donald here. So we are standing up for what is perhaps the busiest road in Singapore today. Orchard Road is right behind me. And yes, this looks a little bit familiar. We're actually on the link bridge of uh, the Orchard Gateway to the Orchard Gateway office. Just a couple of meters away on that end lies an oasis of history, beautiful facades, courtesy of uh, early 1900 shop houses done in the Baroque Chinese style. So we're going to have a look at that place today, talk a little bit about the history, and we're also going to be checking out a unit. So if you've always been curious on what the interior of a shop house actually looks like, today's your chance. And on the off chance that you'd like to have a three-day, two-night stay in a shop house, well, all you have to do is watch to the end of the video. And with that, let's take a walk down Memories Lane. It's almost hard to believe that about 200 years ago, this used to be a nutmeg plantation. I know it sounds completely insane, it does not look like that at all today. Through the years, it became an orchard plantation. And at some point in the early 1900s, two wealthy Chinese businessmen actually purchased the entire place. There were 38 lots which were gradually sold out. And on top of these lots, all these shop houses were built. This place is famous for its Pranakan and Chinese inhabitants. One of which was a very famous guy that you guys might know, Dr. Lim Boon King. Now he was instrumental in influencing the entire neighborhood, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. All right, so I'm actually standing right now at the junction of Carpitch and Orchard Road. And mind you, this was a whole different scene back in the day. In fact, behind me right now is Center Point, which was actually home to the very first cold storage back in 1917. And over here on this end, let's also not forget OG Orchard Point. Once upon a time, this used to be the Orchard Food Market where you, know, you get all sorts of fresh produce, dairies, vegetables. And in fact, there was once a six meter fountain, which has since been moved to the Raffles Hotel. So that being said, let's go a little bit deeper in and let's continue down Memories Lane. And over here on this end, right next to me, was the former SCGS. Now, remember earlier when I said how Dr. Lim Boon King was crucial in forming this estate? Well, his role was instrumental in bringing SCGS here in 1925. The school stayed here all the way to the 1990s. Thereafter, it moved and it was eventually occupied by the Australian International School. And at some point, Chatsworth came in as well. Now it's all empty. It's a, it's a relic. It's an empty shell of past memories. Now what's interesting is you actually have shop houses on both ends of the street but they're not necessarily parallel in design. So over here you can see for the odd numbered shop house units, these are the Chinese Baroque style shop houses with front yards. And over here on this end, you also have the same style but with the five foot walkways instead. Now there's actually a very interesting history behind the five foot walkway. Now back in 1822, and this is many, many years ago, Sir Stanford Raffles actually designed uh, the draft for the first few shop houses. And one key point he wanted was a veranda, which actually ran below the shop houses, forming a common pathway. Now these verandas have since become known as the five foot walkway. Now the history of shop houses is an incredibly interesting one. We've had so many transitions over the years. In fact, we have had six different transitions. The first was the early style shop house. Then came the first transition shop houses, followed by the late style, the second transition, the art decos, and finally, the modern shop houses, which were closer to the 1960 time period. And as a result of that, this was owned by, again, as I mentioned earlier, many wealthy Peranakan and Chinese home dwellers. You can see the influence on the facade, bright colors, a multitude of different cultures. You have the Peranakan style, the Chinese style coming together, as we've seen earlier as well, and all the details that we've pointed out. And not to mention as well, the three windows that you see there, which are very iconic, and of course, helped a lot with ventilation back in the day. Mind you, they didn't have air conditioning at that time, so this was incredibly crucial to make sure the unit wasn't so stuffy. And so just talking about the details, one key thing as well is this right here. Now this is called a Pintupaga. It's actually Malay for gate. And as you can see, many of the shop houses here have retained this. It's a huge historical statement. So as you can see, this is Peranaka inspired mosaic tiles. And again, it lends an entire historical resemblance to this place. So we've actually walked all the way down we're at the end of the late style shop houses and we're at the edge of Saunders Road. Now there's one important unit that I wanted to point out and this was actually the modern shop house, something that you usually see in Tiong Bahru. It's right behind me, you can see it's a very different facade. It looks a lot newer than many of the late style shop houses that we've seen today. 
All right, so I guess that about wraps up the neighborhood tour of Emerald Hill. And as promised, we do have a shop house to check out. Now, the shop house is courtesy of Fickman. They've kindly opened up the shop house to us. A huge thank you to them. They are a cool living shop house experience, and you can check their website in the link box below. Now, incidentally, this shop house that we're checking out today is actually a corner shop house. So that means that it's actually one and a half times bigger than all its neighbors. Shop houses 64 to 74 were designed by this man called Johann Bartholomew. Now, his name might sound familiar because he did eventually become the Justice of Peace in 1935. Finally, 74 Emerald Hill was the first shop house to receive the Architectural Heritage Award back in 1994. So if you guys are ready, let's go have a look. Now, coincidentally, this shop house right here is also known as the library house. I'll show you why in just a bit. Come on in. Wow. I'm just closing this massive wooden doors behind me. Now, coming in, I think the first thing that you realize is that you just get so much space. We've been to so many units and I don't think there's been a place with ceilings this high. You get a mix of concrete walls, uh, wooden rafters. One thing that you do notice is that there's quite a bit of art pieces around the area but there isn't over cluttered to the point that it feels intimidating. In fact, coming in it suddenly feels very cozy, very warm. It's definitely a place that you could see yourself living in. This place was actually owned by an investment banker back in the day and surprise surprise he was actually a huge fan of books. If you look on the shelves here, you'll see tons of books and you actually have five different studio units here, each of which I actually named after authors whose names you'll probably find on the shelves right here. From what I've heard, this place has gone through multiple iterations through the years. I mean, of course, this was a 1900 shop house and something that's interesting is that the wooden beams or the wooden rafters have actually been flushed all the way to the top. These timber panels were specifically sourced to match all the timber panels that were here in the yesteryears. The soundproofing so far seems pretty good. I think a couple of cars have gone by, but it certainly feels very quiet. If you were having a little party here, you probably wouldn't hear anything from the outside. So you might just notice a little cutaway glass right here. Now back in the day, you didn't have air conditioning, so this place didn't really have to be sealed up. So that served as a little ventilation portal for air to come in from the front and to flow all the way through the back. In fact, you can see all the Peranakan details from the facade down to this little glass panel here. It certainly looks very beautiful. And of course, you're going to see this throughout the house. I'll try and point that out to you. All right, so moving on to the kitchen slash common dining area. The first thing that you actually notice is this table here, which seats a good sick. This is Figment, a cool living shop house. So this is a communal space where I believe many people will enjoy their meals. The furnishings have been very cozy, very warm. And in case you're wondering, the furniture here is actually all from crate and barrel. You can also cook. So right here you have your sink, electric hob right there, microwave oven, toaster. One thing that I noticed from the start of the shoot ever since coming in was the sound of running water. That's actually courtesy of this eight Trim right here. Now this was again another implementation that the designers made over the years and in fact if I were to bring your attention to this tree here it's actually a 30 year old bonsai plant which actually had to be crane lifted and brought into the space. Also get a bench here which kind of serves as a table in the event that people would like to work here there are some power sockets around this place as well so this would be a great spot to work to have your calls. This atrium was actually done to bring in more light into the space I mean after all shop houses are notorious for being pretty dark we're just sitting here listening to the sound of the water and looking at the greenery I can't help but think am I really in the middle of the CBD in Orchard? So just a brief overview, it's actually quite a walk from the entrance to the staircase here as you can see. There are a total of three stories here, it goes all the way to the top. And we're actually not on the lowest floor because you do have a basement floor of sorts, that's where your laundry is. Now if you guys want to have a closer look at this space, or perhaps explore it for yourself, you can actually head on to Figment's website. Over there there is a 3D tour of the entire library house. With that, let's head upstairs. As you can see, we're transitioning from granite to timber and just as we're going up, you notice this space again. Beautiful ceramic tiles there. Again, it doesn't feel like I'm in a Singaporean house. You come face to face with the first room. Now it's the Morrison room and uh, coincidentally, this room also features a kitchenette of its own. That's it, let's continue our journey upstairs. 
All right, now that we're on the second floor, you immediately notice that there are units on either end or other studios on either end. So right here, you have the first studio, that's the Hoffman studio. On this end as well, you have studio up there and a couple others down there, which we'll bring you to in just a bit. It is a co-living cool space after all, but sometimes, you know, you just want to come home. You want to go straight into your room. You've probably had a hard day and this helps to facilitate that. But thankfully, we have a studio that we're going to look at today. It's called the Morakami Studio. It's just around this corner. So let me take you in. So here we are in front of the Murakami room, named after Haruki Murakami, who actually wrote Norwegian Wood, I believe, and Kafka on the show. Adding on to that as well, you do have a door lock here, which helps a lot with privacy. And with that, let's head into the studio. All right, here we are. So the first thing you notice immediately is that it's split level. So on this end, I believe that's the bathroom, which we'll check out in just a bit. And right here, you have the rest of the room. You can see the appliances right there. Right here you actually have a kitchenette, so you have a little bit of daylight coming in as well, it helps to brighten up the space. A couple of appliances here, you have your microwave, usuals like your kettle, mini fridge of your own, and even a hob in your room. Let's not forget as well that there's a sink in the corner. For your meals, you can have your dining right here, it sits up to maybe three people, so you can also bring guests over. If the event you want it to be a little bit more private, you can dine in your room as opposed to dining in the common areas. And on to my favourite part of the room, right here you have a platform bed that comfortably sleeps too and perhaps the part that I enjoy the most there's beautiful windows here which not just allows light in I can imagine waking up in the morning having a view of that it's not an incredible view per se but just having a look at the facade it reminds you every day that hey I'm living in a shop house this is a place that's steeped with history you do have quite a bit of storage spaces here you might not have noticed this at the start but this definitely helps a lot additional goods that you might have over here on this end as well you have a little bit of Harry Potter style storage and of course your wardrobe space right here again opposite the bath right here is this little nook which you could come in you notice that it's completely sealed off as well you do have a little bean back there for you to get comfortable it just kind of overlooks the street and of course that 30 year old bonsai plant below now i can just imagine sitting here having a look at a beautiful palm tree outside and just kind of enjoying myself and even if it's hot you know outside can easily spread this panel doors and enjoy the aircon coming into this area all right so that about wraps up the shop house tour i hope you guys enjoyed this allow me to head outside and we can wrap up there all right, so I guess that about wraps up the tour for today. Thank you so much for staying to the end. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the most tiring shoots that we've done, but it was incredibly fulfilling. I think having the opportunity to tour Emerald Hill, to look at all the little historical bits, I do feel that there's still so much history left to be uncovered. This shop house tour today was something that we really enjoyed. I think huge thank you to Figment as well for opening your doors to us, for allowing us to come into your home. I think when people think of shop houses, you usually think of places that are a little bit smaller, older, you know, maybe piping, noise issues, but none of that was present today and we really, really enjoyed ourselves. Uh, hopefully you guys have to Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you want to see more walk down memory lanes, more shop house tours even? We want to hear all of that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell as well. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for staying till the end of the video. Uh, as promised, here are the details for the giveaway. Now, firstly, don't forget to like this video and uh, share it with at least three different friends. Get a little screenshot of that. And uh, secondly, all you have to do is comment down below telling us what you enjoyed most about the library house. Now, it doesn't have to be a full story uh, as long as it comes from the heart. Now, the third and final point, you'll find the full instructions to that in the link box below. With that, best of luck and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.